Hello folks, this is Tom from anti-proton.com and today I wanted to talk to you about radioactive decay. And just a little short piece, I just want to show you something. I swear radioactive decay has come up for me so recently in the last couple of days. You don't even want to know and I don't even want to get into how many different things it's come up into. Uh, thank God I have this really good mechanical pencil. Now, <clears throat> before I go into uh, uh, radioactive decay, let me tell you about something here. I'll show it to you in a minute. Uh, I have a polonium-210 two, uh, sample. Uh, I've shown many of you this sample before, but here's a neat thing. When I bought it, it had one activity. Now it has another. Now, we can predict what we'll read from it, and then we'll see if our predictions are correct. Now, <clears throat> first off, I'm going to pause the video right here, and I'm going to show you what I originally showed you is the activity of, uh, the activity of the item back in like August or something when I first got it. So here's its original activity. Okay, big pancake Geiger Miller tube. Slowly I approach. There we go. You get the idea. All right, now let's see how high we can get if I put the Geiger counter really close to it but without touching it. All right, really, really, really close. I have to get down on the floor so I can look really carefully and make sure. Let's see what we get. All right, that's about as close as I can get it without touching it. Let's see what we get. 24,000 counts per minute. 24, 25, something like that. That's as close as I can get it without touching. Now, as you can see, the activity that we saw was somewhere around um, 24,000 counts per minute, give or take. That's not really how much is coming out of the object. That's how much we can detect. We have a, a four pi geometry to deal with, which is basically the energy expanding into an ever-growing circle and us calculating how much of that we're able to see. We also have the efficiency, which is the ability of the Geiger counter to even detect it in the first place. But what we're going to just simply look at to make this really simple is how much we see now versus how much we saw then. There should be a calculable difference, right? Let's see. 24,000. In fact, let me, let me write that up here on the board on the very top. 24, I'll put a little K beside it so you can remember. Okay, the formula that we use to determine um, uh, 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 atomic decay is our activity at any given point, like right now for example, activity today is equal to activity original. You could write this as uh, a sub 1 equals a sub 0, but I'm just going to write it like this so you understand what it means. It makes it a little simpler. We're going to multiply this original activity by Euler's number, which is an e. If you look at it, it looks like it should phonetically be Euler's number, and it's often accidentally spoken as Euler's number. It's actually Euler's number. Okay, E. And we're going to raise E to the negative. Remember, this is exponential decay. Exponential decay. Well, actually, de exponential decay goes this way. Duh. Exponential decay. Decay. So this is a negative. the decay constant, which I'll tell you what that is in a minute, and then finally, well, lowercase, time. This is where we are today, how long we've gone. Okay, simple enough. It doesn't look too de devastatingly difficult. This is uh, something raised to the power of something. This could simply be something as simple as x equals a times b raised to the power of negative c times e. That's not really the same formula, but I mean, you see there's not too much more involved. This becomes a constant, and yeah, you get the idea. This is, we're not looking at like rocket science here. We're not looking at the partial differential equations of x with respect to y multiplied. Nothing crazy. This is really simple stuff here. All right, so let, let's figure this out. Let's figure this out. Okay. Originally, we saw 20 Four thousand counts per minute. 
we're going to now multiply that by e raised to the power of negative k multiplied by t. Now t, um, did I write this down anywhere? Okay, I did. I wrote it on the board over here because I, I like to double check my math because I get it wrong sometimes if I don't write it down when I'm doing it. I mix things up, flip things around, you know. And I'm sure if you all watch my videos long enough, you'll find errors in my math. Just because this was brought up by somebody else, I, I say this constantly in my videos, so you should already know this by now, but let me just say it for the 50 billion time. I am not a scientist, you know, the lab coat wearing, pouring the chemicals and one another type scientist. I'm a computer scientist, yes. That means I write programs, I write software, I do that sort of thing. So I'm a computer scientist in that regard, but I'm not like a scientist, you know, building nuclear reactors and that sort of stuff. So that means that you should always consult a healthcare professional, etc., if you want to, uh, you know, confirm anything I say and whatnot. And I could be wrong. I'm wrong often enough. Okay? Somebody recently accused me of reporting myself to be a, a full blood or full all the way scientist, and I'm not. I think I've said this like 50 billion times. Although I, I, I'd like to think of myself as an amateur scientist. And by the way, in a year or two here, I'll have my master's in physics, then I will be able to call myself a full scientist. At that point, I'll let you know. I'll like, probably tattoo it to my body, my diploma. Okay, <clears throat> so anyway, let's figure out time. From August, my sample was, um, I'll show you the sample in a minute. The sample I got was in August, uh, 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 created in August of this year. So we're going to just guess that it's August 1st. I know it's a rough guess. Guessing isn't very scientific, but we don't know the exact time. So we're just going to pick any random date. We're going to pick the 1st. Um, if I wanted to be more realistic, I probably should pick the middle of August to be sure, but whatever the hell. I think I got an early part of August, so we'll go with August 1st. From August 1st until the 29th of October is 88.83 days. And I'm going to do, I'm going to do everything in hours just for the hell of it, okay? 88.83 times 24 hours is equal to 213, okay, it's equal to... 2,100, I wrote it up here on the board, 31.92 hours. Alright? Whole bunch of hours. Now, I have multiple whiteboards going across here, that's why I'm looking over to that one. So let's erase this and draw it out. So we've, we're getting parts of this together here. 21, 31.92 hours. Okay, so now we know two parts of this. That'll equal that. We even know what Euler's number is. Type in any calculator, you get it. It's 2.7, whatever. Okay, so what is K? Now, K is an interesting one. K is equal to the natural logarithm. Natural logarithm of 2 divided by the half-life, which is considered to be T sub half. What all this means is the half-life whatever that boils down to. Now let's figure out the half-life here. The half-life of polonium-210 is... I wrote it down over here. Give me a second, I'll bring it up. should be 138 days off the top of my head. Let's see here. Well, from Alpha, that's a good place. Polonium-210. This is how organized I am. 138.376. One thirty-eight point three seven six days. All right, now we want to convert that to hours. So let's do that now. That comes up to that comes out to one thirty-eight. 0.376 times 24 hours. That comes out to 3,321 hours. Right? Yeah, there you go. So 3,321 hours. So let's do the math now. And um, I've already done the math on this. So we take the natural logarithm of 2. So you can go in a calculator and type ln. Here, I'll show you. Type ln 2 divided by 3321. Enter. You're going to get, uh, let's see, 2.2. 2.2. 
2.087 blah 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 times 10 to the fourth. Alright, and I have that written down right here. So let's erase this, and let's erase this, and let's get this all written down together so we can understand it. Alright, let's see. 24,000 counts per minute times e to the negative square uh, um, natural logarithm of 2 divided by the half-life which will come out to 0 0.00027164048654865 this makes a difference by the way if you don't get them all on here 877 we're going to shut it off at about that point because any further it starts getting crazy. And then we're going to multiply that by we're going to multiply that by t. What was t again? t is 88.83 days times 24 hours. So we're going to multiply that by 2131.92 hours. Here, let me step over here to my camera and see if you can even see that. Yeah, you can. Okay. Alrighty. The result, if you do this and multiply it by this, and what you do in your calculator is you type in 24,000, multiply by e raised to the power of negative parenthesis 0 point blah 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 times 2131.92 in parenthesis enter and you'll end up with this. We should now be able to detect 15,380.295 counts per minute. So, now let's see if that's correct or not. The simplest way to know if that's correct is to walk over here and, uh, well, just detect it. Let me put my thing down here and raise my screen all the way up to the, or my screen, my camera, all the way up to the top where you can see. I usually like to think these things through a little bit better. This one's kind of improv, but um, I figured, you know, what the hell. Let's see what we get. Okay. There we go. Now, here is my Geiger counter. There, right there, is Polonium-210. Now, we don't probably need this, but Polonium-210 is 250,000 times more deadly than hydrogen cyanide. So, why not? What do we lose by being protected? As you can see, August 2011, there it is. Radioactive material, 138.4 days, Ta -da. and that's about what we have. Now, here's the Geiger counter. I'm going to put this down on the table, and then see this is this, this is recessed a little tiny bit, just enough that we should be able to put this nearly onto this and see what we get. By the way, this is a calibrated Geiger counter. As you can see, it was calibrated on, well, ironically, 9-11. Wait, no, that's when it was due. 9-12 was when it was calibrated. So this was calibrated on September 12th of this year. So was this. I calibrate all of my Geiger counters to make sure they're absolutely as accurate as one can possibly get for a Geiger counter. Alright, now I want to get this close. I'm going to get down low because I don't want to touch it. That's about as close as I can get it without touching it. Let's give it a moment. Now this is inaccurate because my hand is wiggling. Not bad.
little off. it is. Amazing stuff. Amazing stuff. Well, you saw I got 16,000, I got 17,000. It was moving around there a little bit, and there's some statistical inaccuracy when you're going at these levels, too. And original, uh, my original estimate was 15,380. 15,380, okay? So, uh, my actual result was, um, I'm not left-handed, I'm right-handed, so it's hard to write this way, but 16,000, we'll call it 16,500. If I wanted to be really precise enough to actually put down a number there, I should have run this for about 5 or 10 minutes and did a statistical analysis that way, and I didn't. I just did a quick shot. In other words, this is not a lab quality test that we're doing right this moment. Otherwise, I would have had to been a much more controlled situation. But you see the point. You see the decay. Obviously, this is not too far off, isn't it? In fact, we could reverse engineer this formula by taking that number 16,500 and putting it uh, where the 24,000 is. Oh, sorry, putting it where the equal sign is right here. We could say 16,500 equals 24,000 multiplied by e uh, to the negative this number here, and then at the very end we would put an x, and then we would solve for x. We take the, the, you know, the natural log of both sides, and divide and multiply them out until we had x. And then we would actually know the original manufacturing date of this. So of course, the reason that that's not accurate is because anybody who knows anything about Geiger counters knows that the inaccuracy rating of a Geiger counter can be easily in the plus, uh, you know, five to, or plus or minus five to ten percent range. So we're never going to get an accurate enough reading off of one of these things for, for, this, for this low level of a source. But anyhow, still it's super duper 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 fun. And in a couple weeks here I'll have my gamma, uh, uh, spec, uh, 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 if I can say it ever correctly, gamma spectrography device. I'll have my scintillator and my multi-channel spectrum analyzer and we'll be able to take a better look at this. Because polonium-210 does put off a small gamma, which, of course, we can then look at. But anyhow, this has been Tom from anti-proton.com. And always remember, be safe, because you don't want to be sorry. See? Safe, therefore not sorry. Goes hand in hand. Well, bye-bye.